Once a con man, always a con man. There is nothing that can come out of this administration that is not packaged in lies and fallacy. Very many people had been wondering, including me, why of all the people Babu Wino appeared to betray Raila Odinga. As I had explained earlier, several, about 14 members of Azimio, members of parliament, missed out during the voting on the contentious Finance Bill 2023. And William Ruto, from the word go, had calculated a plot to ensure that this bill sells through by hook or crook. Raila Dinga, up to this morning, held a press conference with other Azimio principals and they opposed this bill, warned the Kenya Kwanzaa of consequences if they bullied their way through the parliament. William Root on the other side had also warned his team of unknown consequences if they betrayed him. Up to this evening, I was waiting for an explanation from Babu Wino. And I was taking cognizant of the fact that in politics, betrayal and interests are the only constant factors. And I was also considering that you can only, you are only betrayed, politically speaking, by your closest friends. But I was also not forgetting the fact that you are innocent until proven guilty. And the law of natural justice demands that you give the worst offender an opportunity to defend himself. So I had analyzed earlier that there were a lot of room for speculation after Babu Wino missed out on the voting process. I picked on Babu Wino and Salasia as the, 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 the two youthful youths, youthful MPs, where, who have got aspirations and many Kenyans lay their hopes on them. And I'm realizing, according to the explanation that Baba Wino has given, and I'm about to give you that video, that it was actually a con, a trick, so that they do not vote. There was a crafted plot by the executive arm of the government and the legislative arm of the government to trick Azimio members of parliament so that they don't vote. Babuin is explaining that the communication that had been given earlier by the Speaker of the National Assembly, Moses Wetangula, was changed to ensure that it advantage or it gave undue advantage to the Kenya Kwanzaa team. Listen to what we are saying. Thank you very much, fellow Kenyans. Today I went to Parliament at around 9.30 a.m. with the intention to debate the finance bill. At around 11 a.m., the Speaker made a ruling that the debate would take place today up to 9 p.m. Then the debate would proceed, will proceed from next week on Tuesday. Thereafter, voting will, will, will take place. Then, after that, based on that decision, I approached Honorable P. Wandai, explained to him my situation, that tomorrow I will, I will be having my defense hearing at Milimani Law Courts, that I, would, I needed to meet my lawyer for preparations. Then he okayed, and I just left. And as we speak, I'm still with my lawyer. I'm still, making, I'm still preparing for my, my case tomorrow at Milimani Law Courts. I, I, I realized while at my lawyer's office that actually the speaker changed and 
made another ruling that the voting was to take place today. By that time, so many members were depending on the fact that voting will take place after Tuesday next week. And that explains why so many members have missed, especially from Azimio. But I want to tell you that this, 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 that this bill, finance bill, is uh, retrocracy. It is a bill that is punishing Kenyans. It is a bill that I can't support. It is a bill that even if Baba himself would have told me to support, I can never support it because of my loyalty to my people. And it is a bill that I know that is going to hurt Kenyans. For today, I'm so sorry I wasn't present because of my situation tomorrow. Thank you and God bless you. I would have doubted Babu Owino until he mentioned that before he went out, he actually contacted his boss in the parliament, the minority leader of Pio and I, and he has mentioned it in that video. Meaning that, one, Babu Wino is so loyal, so honest, so candid, and very open. And I, I need to add that even so much disciplined that before he left the, 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 the National Assembly chambers, he had to contact Opeo and I and told him that there was a case. And so he needed time to, to prepare with his lawyer. That is the only saving grace if you ask me. Because politicians have got excuses when they have been caught. But for Babu, we need to say that they had a discussion with Opio and I, then I tend to believe him. I had also mentioned earlier that I can only allow, in my opinion, two things that are the most serious, if you ask me, so much serious that can hinder a member of parliament from debating on such a very crucial bill and i mentioned death of a close family member or a close friend and in the case of Babuino, if he had a case scheduled on a day when that is a court case on a day when voting was going on and to my surprise he has he's got he, he's got to go to court tomorrow and he was to meet his lawyer i want to give him the benefit of doubt. But back to the National Assembly head, Moses Wetangula is a senior lawyer. Back to the days when people were fighting for second liberation. At one point he was a lawyer to Jaramugyo Gingo Dinga, Raila's father. He's got a wealth, a wealth of experience. He is the one who inherited Ford Kenya. And remember, Jaramugyo Gingo Dinga died while he was the head of Ford Kenya and he left it in the hands of Michael Kijana Malwa. Of course, later Muscari Kombo and Moses Wetangula took it. But for Moses Wetangula to start playing political games in an office that is so sacred, in an office that calls for sobriety, it is wrong and it, it demeans the stature of Moses Wetangula. If you remember the former speaker from almost the same region where Moses is coming from, David Ucheto Marende, Marende exercised his authority in an, uh, so much neutral ground that you'd not even know that he was a member proposed by the ODM. In most of the times, he would use Solomonic wisdom I remember there was a time when Raila Odinga and, 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 and Kalonzo Musyoka were fighting as to who would become the leader of business committee back then in the old constitution. And Marenda realized that he was walking a tightrope, very slippery. After a lengthy discussion and, 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 and uh, consultation, Marenda decided that before they decided on who would take over. He took it himself as the Speaker of the National Assembly.
to be the leader of the business committee. He neither gave it to Raila Moludinga, who was his direct boss, neither did he give it to Kalozo Msioka. Back then, Kalozo was the, the vice president. And so in most of his rulings, he did them in such a way that many people agreed that he never took any side. Moses Wachangula knew very well that this was a bit that was touching on the lives of Kenyans. And all eyes were on parliamentarians. There was no need giving two contradictory directives. One, as Baba Winnox is explaining, that he had told them that they would debate up to late into the night, 9 p.m. And then the, the, the debate would continue up to Tuesday. I think that is what Baba is saying. And so most of the members of parliament left knowing very well that they still had time to come and debate on this and then vote. Yet, when he realized that most of the Zimio members had gone, had walked out because there were several issues that they were dealing with, for example, that one of, of, of Babu Wino, where he had to meet his lawyer to prepare for tomorrow, he decided to change and decided that people were voting today. And you see, this was, if you ask me, this had been uh, communicated to the Kenya Kwanzaa team. And that is why we never had a, a, a good number of absentees from the Kenya Kwanzaa team. And Kenyans must hold Wetangula responsible for passing this erroneous law, apart from the fact that there are other members of parliament who had been bought, other, other members of parliament who just want to vote to please William Ruto. Moses Wetangula must be held responsible. And this is the case of Salasia and many other as Zimio members of parliament who knew very well that they would debate it and then vote later. And if you if, if you look at what is happening, Azimio knew very well that maybe they didn't have the numbers. But they wanted to stand high to be counted to show Kenyans that they are with them in solidarity. Because this bill is injurious. As as, as Baba Win is saying, even if Baba himself had told him to support this bill, he says, he affirms, he would have not voted. And so I think that Babu Wino has been vindicated. He has explained himself. And as I said, the fact that he mentioned it to Opio and I, not unless Opio and I comes later and negate the sentiments of uh, Babu Wino, I think we give him the benefit of doubt because he contacted his boss. The Kenya Panzer team was very much determined. No wonder Rigedi Gashago had warned that this would pass by hook or crook because he had told the Azimio that you don't have the numbers. He knew very well that even with the numbers that Azimio have, he would, they would still do some tricks so that Azimio walks away and then they remain and vote. But the battle is not yet over because Raila says, let's meet on the street. And so ladies and gentlemen, I know we criticize like um, one person who criticizes Babu, but I said that we need to give him time to explain. And now that he has, he has explained, I think Babu still fits in the shoes. He's still the Trojan horse that we have known. And we are looking to playing good politics with him in the near future. And ladies and gentlemen, that is my take.